graduated, I had Margo hand me that white envelope. I'm trying to decide if I can fit a kitten in it or not. <laughs> I, I, I think I can make one fit.
We are going to continue with Christmas songs this morning. Angels from the realms of glory, so please. Nope. Just, no, no, no. Other angels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I put those back to back. I'm sorry. I'm reading off the wrong side. Read to the right of the page, not the left. Angels we have heard on high. Please stand. <laughs> guess we already did that one. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply, echo back their joyous strains. sing. Oh, no. 
Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ my highest heaven adored, Christ the Do we have any kids here? I've got a really cool book we're going to do some. Wow, Lexi, you look great. Look at you. Wow. And you, the baby doll matches. That's Mac. <laughs> it just didn't hit him right this morning. Uh, I've had bad days like that. But it's hard to, as an adult, they really think you're weird if you start doing some of that. Well, today, you guys, I have a book. And this is, the pages are real thick, but this book grows when I tell the story. Have you ever seen a book grow when you tell, tell a story? Yeah, I'll bet you have. <laughs> well, this book grows while we talk because I, I wanted the attention to be somewhere else. So we'll hold this in there. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to try and do this. Because it takes two hands. And a, there we go. We got some more kids. All right. It says, long ago in Bethlehem, so we're going to open the first big page. It says, long ago in Bethlehem, a star shone high and bright. Okay. Look at this. I, I need all the points I can get. Okay. A star shone high and bright. Streams of light fell down from it and lit the cold, dark night. In the hills not far away, sweet angels filled the sky. There we go. Here's the angels. Oh, no, no, Lexi, what do you think? Yeah. Okay. The Prince of Peace, God's son is born. They sang the news on high. Some shepherds heard the angels sing these things about the sun. They hurried off to Bethlehem to see what God had done. Now, I better make a disclaimer here. What you're seeing out there is not what we're seeing in here. All right? Look at that. What are those? Sheeps. Yes, you guys know all about that stuff. Where was I? Oh, they went. They hurried off to Bethlehem to see what God had done. Up and down the hills they ran. They went to find the king. At last they found the manger. 
Whoa. At last, at last they found, a, you know, this is awful. I'm distracted. Uh, at last they found the manger bed. They couldn't help but sing. There they found the baby boy sent from above. They knew he was a gift from God who bring them peace and love. And as they say on TV, but wait, there's more. Okay. Oh, look at this. This is what all the, well, that's what all they were looking at. After Jesus Christ was born, some wise men saw a star, a sign from God to give good news. It shone both near and far. This tells us that a king is born, remarked one learned man. They packed up gifts and rode away toward a distant land. They traveled to Jerusalem. They stopped along the way. But where the baby king was born, no person asked could say. The star still shone above the men, lighting up the sky. It led them to the little house in Bethlehem close by. Inside they knelt before the child. They knew he was the one. The star brought them to Jesus Christ, God's one and only son. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Thanks for your help. No problem. <laughs> I don't know how this goes back. Yeah, there it goes. You like that? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Lexi is so expressive. Do you like dinosaurs too? I know Kale likes dinosaurs, don't you? Is that on your Christmas list? Would you rather have princess stuff? Yeah, yeah. What about you, Kale? You want princess stuff? I didn't think so. You think it's time to pray? Yeah, we better pray before we get too crazy. Lord, we thank you for little things like books that grow. And Lord, because the little ears that hear them grow too. And Lord, we just pray for these ones up here and sitting everywhere else, Lord, that you would just guide them as they walk this path that you set before them. And we thank you for this wonderful time of year. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we have Rick Sams here to talk with us. Well, you know, I take it for granted. Wayne does this all the time, and he's so good at it. And it's like there's just something about being in front of you guys like this. I can have fun with y'all in there while we're eating and it doesn't bother me a bit but up here it's just kind of <laughs> so i'm going to pray with rick come here with me so we can hear this lord i just uh pray for rick as he gives us the message you have for us and lord we give the holy spirit reign mm -hmm. this morning and just uh guide him as he goes and we are so appreciative that he's here in jesus name amen thanks Bob. i'm so glad to be here this morning thanks to wayne for inviting me pastor wayne and uh, I'm just glad to learn that there's so many McDonald's where people pay for your sandwich. Can I get the addresses of those? Uh, that is awesome. Yeah. So, no, I'm glad to be here. And, um, you know, sometimes we hurry too quickly through Thanksgiving. Um, several years ago, there was a challenge that went out. It's called the Ice Bucket Challenge. Anybody remember that? Yeah. I thought about just demonstrating that again this morning. Uh, no, the Ice Bucket Challenge was a fundraiser to raise for the ALS Society and ALS Research, which is Lou Gehrig's disease. And anybody want to take a crack at what they raised in one year, the first year they did it? How much? Worldwide. One year. Anybody want to guess? Ten million. Okay. Any other? Two hundred and twenty million. Yeah. Two hundred and twenty million. So Pastor Wayne asked me to do it again this morning. And this time it's going to be to raise funds for the Pastor's Discretionary Fund. Uh, 
<laughs> so anybody vol want to volunteer? What they did is they dumped an ice bucket on themselves, and I challenged you know, Bob to donate $1,000 to the Ellis Society, or I'm coming after you, and I'm going to do this. Well, you know, that, that challenge faded over time. I gave a challenge shortly after that to our congregation where I pastored for 41 years in Alliance, um, the Thanksgiving challenge. And it was real simple. What I want you to do is to write down three things every day. Don't just think it. Don't just tell somebody. Actually, write it down on a piece of paper. I have a journal that I keep. And so I have been doing this recently, again, because I'll tell you what happens is those kind of challenges fade with time. You know, we just kind of, the ice bucket challenge faded. I'm sure my Thanksgiving challenge, if, if I'm not doing it every day, then I'm guaranteeing you my congregation's not doing it every day. And so I, I've, re, I've reenacted that in my own life, and to do it every day through Christmas or through the new year. Why do I say that? Because two things. One is we're commanded to that in the scriptures. In Hebrews 13, it says, offer unto God constantly a sacrifice of praise. You know, and sometimes you don't feel like it, but you know what? It wouldn't be called a sacrifice. It was, it was going to be easy, right? It's hard sometimes when you're having disease and people going home, you know, to heaven. Uh, it's hard to offer that sacrifice of praise, but it says everybody that, that should do that, that, that bears the name of Christ, the Psalms, you can't read one Psalm without tripping over commands to thank the Lord. Doesn't, you know, and those people, if you read the Psalms carefully, those Psalms were raw honesty of the painful experiences they were going through, right? They're transparent. They are, they're just hanging their emotions out there, painful emotions. And yet they all, almost all the Psalms end with thanksgiving or praise. Give thanks to the Lord. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. What if you had to do that every Sunday morning before you entered these courts? How quickly would you get in? I'm always amazed sometimes in prayer groups where I'll say, now, before we talk about and ask for prayer for Aunt Maudie's, you know, hangnail, let's all give thanks to the Lord. And how long we will sit there before somebody shares something. I was so th grateful for the thanksgiving you all gave here this morning. But, you know, it's not natural, and that's why we're commanded to do it. Here's another reason. It, this is very much a secondary reason. It's enough that God commands it. But a secondary reason is the research, and I think I'm going to skip that video in the interest of time. And By the way, if you're used to getting out at 1030, I'll just say the benediction. And <laughs> No, we're good? Okay. All right. Uh, uh, no, i um, but this video, and I put the link to it, or uh, the guy's name, just go on TED Talk or YouTube and type in, uh, in, in your bullet and insert Sean Aker uh, video on happiness. It's been viewed by like a gazillion people. And basically what he does is he's a psychologist, and he demonstrates the studies that they've done to show how your blood pressure goes down, you can lose weight this way, you can beat down depression in your life, by just writing down three things every day for which you're thankful. And the, the, the social science research backs that. So that's just a little icing on the cake. It's enough, though, that God says we should do this. Turn to Psalm 77, would you? Psalm 77. The writer here is depressed. He's discouraged, or he is in despair. We don't know why, but that helps us relate to Asaph, this worship leader who's not being comforted by prayer. He's not able to sleep. And, and by the way, sleep is one of those things that really increases your health. <laughs> so I feel bad if you're not a good sleeper. I'm a good sleeper. My wife is on the Olympic sleeping team. Uh, <laughs> she's gold medaled in that a couple times. <laughs> no, she, uh, she's, uh, she's a great gal. She puts off all kinds of misdirected humor. But uh, <laughs> no, she... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say anything more about that. Uh, Psalm 77, I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands, and my soul refused to be comforted. I feel bad for the people who have insomnia, because there's all kinds of other stuff that goes along with that. 
the sleep industry in America, I, last chance, uh, the time I read it, it's like in the $40 billion of sleep prescriptions and sleep aids that people spend every year on sleep aids. It's, it's amazing. Uh, one guy, uh, a friend of mine, was on a trip, and he was taking sleep aids, and he woke up naked outside his hotel room so with a door locked. So be careful about taking sleep aids. If you need them, take them, but if, you know, be careful with them. But he's, this guy's not able to sleep. I thank God that both of us are good sleepers for the most part. And so it, he says, but at night, my soul refused to be comforted. I remembered you, oh God. I groaned and my muse. Now notice that word remembered. Notice the word muse. This is the NIV I'm reading. My spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. He's a worship leader, so music ha has been a comfort to him, but we're not sure it's working now, okay? He says, I, I remember my songs in the night, but my heart refused, my heart mused, and my spirit inquired. See those words, remembered, groaned, mused, thought, remembered, mused, inquired? Those are significant. Ten times this one psalm mentions words like that. Ten times. When something in the Bible wants you ought to sit up and pay attention, what if it mentions it ten times in one chapter? And yeah, and so here's what that, those words mean in the Hebrew and even in English. They mean to think a long time about this. Don't just skip, you know, just, don't just hit it and skip on to the next thing. Because we live in a society that we're always on the move. You know, somebody mentioned Christmas busyness. You know, that's us all year. We're just, bip, 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 we're on to the next big thing. And we don't have time to really process. We don't have time to muse like this psalm writer is doing, and it's helping him. That's the thing that's helping him right now. He's got six big questions. Look at this. He says, will the Lord reject us forever? Will he never show his favor again? His, has his unfailing love vanished? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Then I thought... To this will I appeal, the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. I will remember those deeds. He says, yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will meditate on all your works and consider all your mighty deeds. Here's how a couple other translations. Those wonderful deeds are constantly in my thoughts. I can't stop thinking about them. The message translation says, once again, I'll go over what God has done to lay out on a table the ancient wonders. I'll ponder the things you've accomplished and give a long, loving look at your acts. Do we give a long look at anything anymore? I mean, it's just, we're, again, we're always on to the next big thing. I've heard it, and, and yet we need to stop and ponder what God is doing and where, you know, how we see him in the events of our day and his great acts of the past, which then he eventually does here, and that's what helps him. You know, I heard it said that man is the only one of God's creations that goes faster when he's lost. Wow. Think about that. All the other uh, creations, creatures, when, they, when they're lost and disoriented, they stop. And they just kind of look around. Not us. We just, we hit, you know, we hit the gas. You know, like, uh, like the one guy that was new to, to driving. And he said, you know, what's, what's, the, uh, what's the green light mean? It means go. What's the red light mean? It means stop. What's the yellow light mean? Go faster. You know, that's us. That's our modus operandi. And here, you know, muse and meditate on all works, all your works. And here's the thing. Notice what that tra one translation said. I will think constantly. I can't stop thinking about your wonderful acts. Here's my question. What can't you stop thinking about? What can't you stop thinking about? What do you, when you wake up in the middle of the night, what does your thought immediately turn to? When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing on your mind? You know, now if you're in a Sunday school class, you're going to say one thing, but if you're honest, <laughs> you know... When you don't have to think about something else during the day, 
What does your mind turn to? I'm, I, I've done this long enough to know that in this service, half of you, your mind is wondering. That's the statistic. That, that half the time, half the people's mind is wondering somewhere else, not on what the preacher is saying or what the so singers are saying. Half the time. And so what, what can't you stop thinking about? That's called your default thoughts. I'm going to call it that. Your default. What do you default to? And do you know what? Usually, because of who we are, it's a problem. It's a negative thing. It's something we've done wrong. It's a regret. You know, how do you stop that? How can you stop that? Can I read you from 2 Corinthians? This is 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Listen to what it says there. It says, the weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. And we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Those strongholds, those often are the things that our mind turns to quickly and automatically when we wake up in the night, when we get up in the morning, when we don't have to think about something else in the day. We demolish every thought. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. So I told you about the ice bucket challenge. I told you about the Thanksgiving challenge. Write three things down every day. Here's the truth challenge. The truth challenge. What I want you to do when you're having a problem, when you're, you're constantly thinking about those negative thoughts that I warned you about that is too typically our default thoughts, Take a piece of paper or your journal, write a line up the middle, and I want you to take captive every thought that is bombarding your brain, those negative thoughts, those problem thoughts, those you know, regrets that you have, those, those prodigal children that you'd love to see come back to the Lord, those financial problems, that terrible diagnosis that your doctor gave you or gave someone you love to... Write down all the lies that you're believing right now from the world, the flesh, and the devil, the world system that says might makes right, he who dies with the most toys, anything contrary to God and God's word. That's the world system, okay? Um, write those down, anything from the lies from the world, the flesh, and the devil on the left column, and then on the right column. Folks, I do this, and I want to tell you, it helps and if it doesn't work for you, you come back, and I will give you your money back, okay? <laughs> then you ask the Lord, help show me a truth so I can take captive those lies and make it obedient to the word of Christ like 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10 tells us to do. Make it captive, take it captive to the truth of God and his word. And then write those as God gives them to you down the right column. And I guarantee you, it will help you with those negative default thoughts that are constantly bombarding your brain to take captive every thought. See, this is what this psalm writer does. And muse on them. When's the last time you used the word muse in a sentence? <laughs> it means think long. It means consider. It means meditate. We have let the Eastern religions steal a word that is a great word, and it's called meditation. That should be a Christian word. It just means think long. Mary did that. She pondered. She thought long about the, the words that the angel told her at Christmas time that weren't exactly good news for her because you know what Deuteronomy said you're supposed to do to someone who's caught pregnant outside of marriage? Stone them. Joshua was told to go into the promised land. But the leader that's led them for 40 years is dead. And there's giants in them. He saw the giants 40 years earlier. And because the 10 other spies, other than him and Caleb, said, oh, we can't go in there. There's giants in that land. And so now he's right on the verge of the promised land. But you know what the Lord told him to do? Let me tell you what the Lord told him to do. In Joshua, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, Chapter 1, verse 8, it says, Do not let the book of the law depart from your mouth. In other words, he says, take those negative thoughts captive. 
about the giants in the land, about the fact that your leader Moses is dead. Take those thoughts captive. Meditate, it says. Don't let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it. Muse on it. Think long on it. Day and night. So that you may be careful to do. Can I tell you something? So, do you ever lack the power to obey God and his word? Are you meditating on God and his word? It looks like there's a really key meditation obedience link here. Meditate on them so that you may be careful to do. And look at the promise there. Then you will prosper and be successful. Look at that. <laughs> but how often do we think about this? Think long about something, you know, because we're on the move. We got to get to the next big thing. We got shopping to do. We got gifts to buy. We got presents to wrap. We got parties to go to. We got parties to plan. We... Think long. Here's the, here's the, I am not against all that stuff, okay? I am not a Grinch. <laughs> My wife's much more into the, the festivities and the decorations and the gift buying. She handles all of that. She's a, I gotta say some nice things because I said that, that thing about sleeping. <laughs> but she handles all of that, all the decorations, all the gift buying, all the present wrapping. She's wonderful, 45 years. Do you still love me? I do. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, but we're, uh, here's the opposite of muse. The opposite of muse is ah muse. Ah muse. Neil Postman wrote a book called Amusing Ourselves to Death. And folks, it simply means without thinking. Without thinking. That's exactly what the word ah muse means. And again, I'm not against amusement. But folks, don't we overdo it? Don't we? Anything to so we don't have to think about God and God's mighty acts. That's what the psalm writer goes on to do. He recounts the greatest miracle in the history of his nation, the exodus, the deliverance from Israel, or the deliverance from Egypt, to think long. And so as you think about the, the ice bucket challenge, are you, sure, are you sure, Bob, you don't want me to? Pastor's discretionary. Who will give me 100 bucks to the uh, pastor's discretionary fund if I dump this ice bucket on? <laughs> Oh man, we, you, all, the, all, the, all, the, all the hands are going up out there. Now, as you think about the Thanksgiving challenge, writing down three things for which you're thankful for every day from now until January 1, you might like it enough to keep doing it. And then the truth challenge. When you're struggling, when you're in, discouraged, when you're thinking about regrets and negative thoughts, write a line through the middle of a sheet and write down those lies from the world, the flesh, and the devil that you're believing. And then say, Lord, show me, help me take every thought, every lie captive to the words of Christ. And then write those down, the, and I guarantee it will help. It will help. It'll change you. That's right. And, and, and you know, if you're having trouble uh, coming up with those th three things for which you're thankful for every day, you know what? Every day, start with what David said. Thank you for the joy of my salvation. Psalm 51 the joy of my salvation. Let's pray. Father God, we pray for this time, this challenge, to pray that we would think and then thank. Think long and then thank and then experience that joy and that abundant life that you came to give. Oh, Lord. And Lord, if there's anybody here that can't thank you for the joy of salvation because they don't know it, they don't know that life abundant that you promised and you came to give at Christmas and every day. Lord, may they linger here in this sanctuary and let somebody pray for them. I would be happy to pray for you today if you want to linger after the close here. And uh, uh, Lord, we just pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to allow you to just decide how you want to close today. I'll be here if you'd like to pray. Um, I'm going to eventually go to Gene's Sunday school class, but I don't have to get there at 11. He does. But uh, anyway, but uh, I'd love to just pray with you if you'd like to come forward. If you want to pray by yourself, why don't you use this side? If you want to pray with somebody, uh, use this side. And I'm sure Bob and others would pray with you as you come. Why don't you stand?
Apostle Paul also said, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is good, think on these things. What's good advice? Go tell it on the mountain. Let's go out this week from here and let's proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching o'er silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens, there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angels chorus that hailed our savior's birth go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ is born down in a lonely manger the humble Christ was born and brought us God's salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born.